Thank you. It's um, a huge privilege to be here at the inaugural TIP event. Um, I can't think of a single more important event to be getting underway in the whole of global healthcare, and I say that reservedly. So thank you to, um, to Laura and Justin uh, and Ipsit and uh, the uh, uh, organizers. Particularly thank you for having somebody who's not from the United States. So um, uh, what I'm really excited to talk to you about is um, what I think is um, the, the big elephant in the room over the course of uh, the last day and a half. Um, and that is how exactly we're gonna move from N equals 50, N equals 100, N equals 250, to even begin to address the scale of challenge that we've talked about again and again. And in order to do that, um, just a quick kind of personal journey, um, because I started out uh, as an academic psychiatrist, Cambridge University Neuroscience, um, uh, University College London and Imperial College London um, membership of the Royal College of Psychiatrists and uh, a research fellowship at Queen Square in computational neuroscience. But it was pretty obvious to me um, from the get-go that the people I was seeing in my clinic, I was seeing probably about 20 or 30 years too late. Um, and that really started for me uh, a journey of trying to address, um, characterize and then address the kind of the big issue, which is, well, what can we do to implement um, population health management. Um, so I started off at McKinsey looking at healthcare IT systems. It was pretty clear that IT was changing everything from entertainment to travel uh, to communications, but where was it in healthcare? We were still using paper records at the time. Uh, I then had the opportunity to stop advising other people on what to do and take some responsibility for my actions. So I got a proper job, uh, left McKinsey and joined the government in Abu Dhabi, which um, at the time had a very ambitious program to set up a national health service um, to address, in large part, a crisis of uh, long-term conditions, particularly diabetes and cardiovascular disease. And uh, despite the stigma and the fact we had to whisper it, yes, mental health conditions too. Um, I spent seven years as Director of Public Health, and um, I, that was at least 70 years of health reform in any Western healthcare system because we were able to move extremely quickly. Happy to share some stories. Then I took a job with a U.S. healthcare firm, uh, Healthways, working in population health management, looking after 70 million people and implementing population health management solutions around the world. And then I was tapped on the shoulder to consider taking a role at Telefonica Alpha. Um, so end to end, I've been uh, sitting on every corner of the table in healthcare. I've seen the challenge, the same challenge from every perspective as a regulator, as a payer, as a provider, as a technologist. And we keep coming back to the same question, which is what are we going to do to scale up? So let me try to shine a light. So firstly, a quick introduction to Telefonica. Um, so we are one of the top five um, global telecommunications companies. We've got 350 million customers around the world in 25 markets. Um, in a nutshell, we cover um, UK, Spain, Germany, in Europe, uh, and all of Latin America. Uh, we have B2B business here in the United States, but we're not a cell phone provider, as you probably know. Um, of course, we're providing the foundational connectivity layer, the IP layer, for telephone calls and uh, 3G, 4G, wi uh, uh, wireless uh, internet access. Um, but that core business that we're in is commoditizing. So what's, what's called the dumb pipe is uh, not the sexy story anymore in healthcare IT or in IT generally. Uh, it's the services that are being provided on top. So we spend about a billion dollars a year on R&D and um, uh, we're looking to reinvent ourselves as a digital services provider. So as part of that, um, we've set up Alpha, and Alpha was created in February of last year as a moonshots unit, and we think uh, with uh, advice that it's the first moonshots unit outside of the United States. This is a combination of a huge problem, a radical solution to fixing that big problem, and some breakthrough technology to drive that radical solution. So that begins to sound to me very much like the kind of challenge that I've been beginning to describe and the elephant in the room here. So that's what we're taking a look at in Alpha Health. So let me just take another swing at the challenge. So um, as we all say, I'm sure if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I think what we're saying again and again in different ways is um, the systems for providing mental health care to those with mental illness around the world is broke and we need to fix it. So yes, one in four people will have a syndromal mental illness every, uh, every year. And yes, the picture here is intended to show that this is real human suffering. So I have family members with mental uh, illness. I have close friends with mental illness. Uh, those of us that are clinicians know what this looks like up close and personal. So this really is, beyond the statistics, a human story. So something really needs to be done. 
And then we look at the opportunities. So we have um, a, a range of technologies that I call the digital cavalry, which is finally coming to help us out in healthcare. I say finally because it's decades after other industries that have been transformed by digital. So of course we have the combination of the big data that comes out of our cell phones, but also the way that we live our digital lives, coupled with machine learning, which enables us to generate insight from that data at real time at the population scale. We have a variety of compelling new channels from virtual reality, augmented reality, and enhanced reality, um, many of which are now coming to consumer grade, so I'm sporting my new iPhone 10. Um, and uh, and pleased to see that it's got ER incorporated on it. And this, of course, is bringing that technology channel to millions of people around the world. We have blockchain that allows us to distribute data and distribute the records of how data is used at unprecedented scale. And, of course, we have um, an increasing fervor um, uh, in the US and beyond in digital health innovation with VCs and private equity firms pumping $28 billion into 4,400 4, deals over the last five years alone. So all of this energy is beginning to create some potentiality. However, there are some issues. So we talked about the WPA Lancet Psychiatry Commission um, uh, circles, and I like these very much. So we've got mental health uh, in 2017 at the center and the future of mental health in the pink circle at the outside. Um, but then we've got the cavalry coming, the wearables, the connected patients, the machine learning, the smartphones, augmented or virtual reality centers and so on. But then we have this layer of fudge, this green circle of thorny issues around financing, interoperability, gosh, regulation, clinical utility, clinical, clinician engagement and so on. So really the question is, well, how can we pierce through that green circle and actually bring the potential benefits um, to the world. So just to dig into these a little bit, so number one, I have lost track of the number of healthcare companies, great innovations, which have proven efficacy or proven effectiveness in the lab um, that have failed then to make one single sale to one clinician in practice. Likewise, the number of um, uh, startups that sell to one clinician office and then think miraculously the rest of the world is going to find out and be knocking the door down and saying, where can I get hold of this? Or sell to one state, Blue Cross Blue Shield being a great example here in Massachusetts, the healthcare state in the US, uh, but then fail to generalize across the rest of the nation uh, and the rest of the world. And of course, here in the US, we see the topsy-turvy world of how political spending $3.2 trillion of of uh, GDP um, per year becomes uh, with the swings and roundabouts. So I've actually never seen a larger signature than Donald Trump's signature on the right there. Um, so uh, obviously signed with gusto. But, uh, but we're spending $3.2 trillion a year on healthcare here in the United States, but a, a, a mind-boggling $10.3 trillion uh, globally um, uh, on healthcare. So this means that we attract the interest of a lot of lobbyists, the vested interests of... Uh, uh, companies that are involved in providing healthcare just the way it is um, in maintaining the status quo. And it becomes very political, not just here in the US, but also in other countries beyond. It's really important that your widget, beautiful and wonderful though it may be, fits into a continuum of care that we could call a value chain. So be it a sensor, which is able to look at uh, elderly folk and how they move around their house, be it a new digital app, which is able to bring healthcare to um, uh, the, uh, to, to the service user uh, beyond the clinic, it fits into a value chain that starts off with collecting raw data, ones and zeros, and ends up with measurable impact, uh, to Gary's point about um, making sure that we can value uh, uh, the, the impact that we're creating. So it's really important that technologists understand this value chain, understand where they fit in, and partner to complete the value chain end-to-end. -end. It's also really important to recognize the deep humanity of people with mental illness. They're not the label of depression or anxiety. They are mums and sisters and daughters and brothers and fathers and community members. These are people who don't want to carry a label. They didn't ask for mental illness to come into their lives. And it's important to recognize that they will expect every much as uh, the degree of personalization, understanding their human experience of their illness, and they will want to see that reflected in the service delivery. So one size does not fit all um, uh, in technology, but one of the huge benefits of digital technology is we know how to do user-centered design, and we know how to make things very personal, um, and therefore to help earn the trust 
uh, that people will need to build an intimate service. So let's talk about some solutions. Well, nature um, is full of lessons for those who choose to observe her. Um, and what nature tends to do is um, to find a vector. Um, so, of course, most vectors are infectious organisms that go on things like mosquitoes. So I found this charming picture here of a snail hitching a ride on a lizard. Um, but the point is that, um, uh, that technologies will gain the ability to affect tens of millions or hundreds of millions or billions of lives if you choose the right vector in order to carry your technology to those lives. Um, the vector is not just the cell phone. Cell phones are manufactured by companies that want to sell more cell phones. Um, uh, they are connected by telecommunications companies that want people to use telecommunications. What you're looking for is a vector that carries the same spirit and mission that you have in doing what you are seeking to do. So a couple of things that we're going to be doing um, over the course of the next year. Um, we're going to be launching um, what we call our research platform in 2018. This will be um, a, a system which will allow us to address pinch points in two parts of the development value chain. So from one side, the idea through to publication. And then the second is publication through to tech transfer and taking technology into the wild. Um, we really believe in Telefonica Alpha in the Boston ecosystem. We will be coming here with our friends and colleagues um, from Massachusetts General and from MIT, uh, Pikawa and, and others, to tell the story in more detail. But please keep a lookout for this because I believe more than ever over the last day and a half that there is absolutely critical and wonderful insight here in this room and happening in this city. And we really want to work together with you to help to bring that to scale. The second is um, I would encourage um, uh, any of you who have tools that are proven in the lab uh, or tools that you would like to see taken up to population scale um, to, to get in touch um, because we're really keen to understand what's out there and we're really keen to figure out ways to bring it up to population scale. So here's our website, alpha.company, and Ken Morse, who's sitting at the front here, is our redoubtable gentleman in Boston. Um, and very experienced working within entrepreneurship within this ecosystem, um, please do get in touch and bring us your wares. We will find a way to bring them to the world. Thank you.